Hey guys, um, welcome to another lesson on how to draw two-dimensional graphics in Java. Um, and of course, uh, don't get confused if you just heard that, you're still in the beginner Java tutorials. It's just that we are kind of focusing on drawing 2D graphics right now. And the reason I'm focusing on that is one, because it's kind of a lengthy topic, and two, it's pretty cool. So I think it's a nice break to do something fun. Um, so what we're going to do today is show you how to, um, well, make your drawn object move. Um, because as of now, we've just been drawing these shapes, and they've just been sitting there. And that's pretty cool, but looking at not moving shapes forever isn't the coolest. So let's get to work. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to make a square, and we're going to make it move to the bottom right of our screen. Um, so let's get started. Uh, first, we want to declare three variables. We want to declare int x, and we want to set that to 200. And we want to declare int y, and set that to 200. And then we want to declare int time, and set that to 0. Now you guys remember int x and int y from the recent ones, but int time is kind of new, and that's okay. You'll uh, see what's going on with that one soon. So what we're going to do is we are going to um, first make a while loop, and you should know what that is. If you don't, that's okay. Go check the other tutorials on while looping, or looping in general. And then we're going to do time. Uh, let me slow down for a second. Oops, wrong key. We are going to do while time is less than or equal to 1000. Do this. Now let me organize. Okay. So do this. And what we're going to put in here is a try catch statement. You should know what this, this is. If you don't, that's okay. Um, so let's do try and then below that we're going to catch the exception catch exception e and once that exception is caught we are going to print the stack trace just in case anything happens um, and as you know print stack trace means print everything that went wrong uh, with the program if something went wrong um, in the try statement we are going to write thread.sleep and we are going to put this in for 100. Now let me explain what this means. Uh, thread is kind of a um, a confusing topic, so I'll just read this description and we'll get onto threads later. Um, a thread is a thread of execution in a program. The Java Virtual Machine allows an application to have multiple threads of execution running concurrently. Now, even I find that confusing. That's a not an amazing description and I will describe it for you later on but just imagine this as a delay so delay our program for 100 milliseconds and that's why we put 100 in here um, of course you can put in a thousand to make it one second or 10,000 to make it 10 seconds although 100 is just perfect for what we're doing so after this try catch statement we are going to do two things we're going to do X plus plus and then y plus plus and what this means is we're going to add one to our x variable and add one to our y variable because we want it to move um, because we're updating the location of our square and then we're going to do g dot clear rect and let me explain this for a second it pretty much means we are clearing or erasing the area that we define so if I put in 0 for x, 0 for y, and let's say I put in 10 for width, and 10 for height, what it would do is it would delete uh, a 10 by 10 square at the bottom left of our screen. Because our x is set to 0, so automatically our point is set to 0x and then y is set to 0 so it would, the y is 0 and then 10 and 10 so it will go out and it will 
have a height of 10 and a width of 10, and it will delete that area. Um, and that's okay if it sounds a little confusing, but what we're going to do is instead of 10 and 10, we're going to put 400 by 400. And the reason we're doing that is because we have our um, GUI set to a default size of 400 by 400. And we want to clear the entire GUI, which is 400 by 400 height and width, by using this command. And if you don't fully understand what I'm saying, that's okay. As I always do, I will explain what, went, what happened when we run the program. But pretty much what this means is erase everything. And then we're going to type g dot draw rect. And you guys know what that is. So we are going to have the variables x, y. And then the width, uh, let's set that to 100. And then let's set the height to 100. All right, and we should be good to go. Let's run the program, and I'll show you what's going on. So if you look here, we see this little box, and the box is moving down to the bottom of the screen. And let me describe what is happening, actually, really quickly. So let me uh, restart it so I can describe as it's moving. Um, what's happening is we have a while loop. Uh, in this while loop, what it does is it checks if time is less than or equal to 100. If that is true, it will update the variables y and x, and it will add one to them. And once that happened, it will clear this entire screen. So from here all the way down to here, it will make this clear. It'll delete everything in it. And then it will draw a rectangle at the location x and y, and with a height and width of 100. So pretty much what it's doing is erasing the screen and then making a new rectangle, and then erasing the screen, making a new rectangle, erasing the screen, and making a new rectangle, over and over and over and over again. So that is how this program is working. And the reason it's moving at that speed is because we told the thread to sleep or delay for 100 milliseconds. So every 100 milliseconds, it updates. And I can change that number if I want it to move quicker or slower. So I want it to move every one second. I could run this, and you'll notice that the square is moving very, very slowly. It's just barely getting by, and it would take a while for it to reach the end. But if I set this to 50 milliseconds, and I saved and ran the program, you would see that it, he that it heads to the end very, very quickly, and is off screen about the time I am finished talking. And so that concludes a very straightforward and simple explanation on how to animate one of these objects. There are different ways to do it, although this is a pretty straightforward way, and I think it's visually easy to understand. And that's pretty much it. Um, I'm glad you were watching. And you can, uh, one more thing, is that you can do this with any shape. You can do this with a circle, an arc, a polygon, or really anything. But for this tutorial, that's all we have the time for, and I'd like to thank you for watching.